It's going? Okay. It used to be that calling someone a geek was a pretty big insult, but nowadays a geek is someone who knows what she likes, who knows who she is, and who is well equipped to enjoy living in this century. And what we want to do tonight is share with you 11 things that uh, promote geekiness. And we're going to talk a lot about kids, but this really is something that applies to raising geeks of all ages. Um, we could have done this as a top 10 list, but this goes to 11. So, Geeks are about more than trying. We predict, we test, we adapt. Uh, there was a recent study that showed that good planning was a key factor in predicting educational success. And uh, planning is about asking questions about what's possible. At our Family Geek Camp, we don't have step-by-step -step instructions, but rather we try to model asking good questions and, uh, and trying to find good places where you can find uh, reliable answers. Finding the answer is the answer. Failure is always an option. You learn from your mistakes. Sometimes the best thing a parent can do is to stand back and let physics play bad cop. You can be there and be supportive, and together you can figure out what went wrong and what you, you want to do differently next time. It's all data. But sometimes you have to jump in and help to keep things from really falling apart. Um, and within a supportive environment, failure allows children to de develop resilience and problem-solving skills. Parents see things that kids don't see. They see danger and head injuries and scientific experiments that are going to go dud. But we see these things because of our experience, and we need to give our kids that same opportunity. So the next time you want to intervene, count to three first, unless someone's on fire. And if you do act, uh, look for shared experiences. So technology can be a very scary thing for some people, but you're never going to get over that fear if you're trying to avoid it. Um, so you've, to really know a community, you've got to be a part of it. Um, that's, these shared experiences also become a creative material. And creativity doesn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, you know, it, it has to have a context. The things that we make are steeped in this uh, common language, which we use to express ourselves in the world. And good geeks will try to learn what this language is about and know what it is. Um, it helps us to avoid pitfalls and find uh, other routes around from our past experiences. Um, it's also something that's constantly in flux. So we're shaping it as we learn it. Um, and learning uh, is better when you're doing it, not in isolation. The image of a geek being someone toiling away alone at night with his Mountain Dew is outdated. Geeks learn from each other. They learn through teaching, through problem solving together, through creative collaborations. And the answer to how many times do I have to tell you is a lot. Children learn through repetition, through trying things again and again. This is why parents have the bedtime story memorized, but to kids it's still as fresh as the first day you opened it. And then even after it's become a part of their skill set, it's not necessarily the one they're going to remember to call on. I know how to send a direct message properly, but that doesn't mean that I don't tweet to the entire world, thanks, love you, babe. <laughs> Adam Savage once said, uh, I reject your reality and substitute my own. Um, a lot of times our kids will enjoy things that I don't like or uh, will go approach problems in ways that I wouldn't. Um, but entering their world and is really important to a first step in connection. And everybody wants to connect. Um, it's, uh, it's only our misinterpretations are what causes angst. So we have to with, engage our kids by getting down on the floor with them and letting them make the rules. And it's through lear learning the rules of their games that is going to make it more likely that they're going to play ours. A lot of people want to know, should I let my child win this game? And it's pretty simple, just ask your child. You can say something like, do you want me to play as hard as I can or do you want me to go easy on you? Or even, uh, who do you think should win tonight? Um, through this kind of flexibility, kids can learn how to be gracious winners and good losers too. Um, arguing is an art. Um, we model through, our, through how we interact. We want kids to see respectful disagreement um, and, and teach them how to compromise and try new things. Um, and you also want kids to see the actual argument because they need to learn that it's not catastrophic and that there's problem solving that happens. Children don't need a united front, we're not at war. Children need respectful communication. 
And we'll close with uh, just a remembrance that when the uh, Apollo 8 crew went around the moon for the first time, they sent back this breathtaking image of an Earth rise. And there was a telegram at the end of that very tumultuous year that said very simply, uh, you saved 1968. And when I look at uh, the small, wondrous moments that you get uh, that can just completely eradicate all, a string of bad things, you know, I, when I get a gift from my nine-year-old kid uh, for Father's Day, it's, it's this feeling of watching our creations create. Thanks.